those kings is the fact that I can spread cards. If you can't spread cards, it's going to look like this. Seven. Seven. And then we go through that the whole time. So even though this trick is actually very easy to do from a technical perspective, if you want it to flow nice, you're going to have to learn how to take those cards off and get to it. And which is another way of saying, all these tricks are great, but there's really a lot of reason that you want to spend the time learning how to spread cards well. You want to get really comfortable with it because it's going to be important because you can't create the picture you want to create if you can only create the picture you're stuck with. And if I spent all my time doing this, the picture you'd be stuck with was me doing this. That's what the trick would, you'd remember. And you guys know there's been a lot of good tricks that you've seen people do, and all you remember is watching them fumble their way through spreading. And so it's worth the energy to work on that. And, and that's, the, uh, that's the long and winding trick. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. And just as you're gathering those up and resetting uh, everything and, and doing your next deck switch, um, I was just hoping that you could explain to all of us exactly what house pants are. Oh, was that a question from the internet? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you guys. I don't know if you all ever, you know, back in the old days, I used to have to perform magic in a suit. And it was always kind of crazy because you wonder if Under Armour would make you a suit. Because they don't. You're magic and you're... And one of the things is I think we, a lot of us think magic is intellectual. It's something that we think about and do at home. It's actually like an aerobic activity. One has to l jump and leap and be clear and physical and do the show with your body. One needs to even rehearse with your body. One's show clothes are work clothes. Show pants are show pants. And when the show is over, one doesn't need to wear show pants anymore. One needs to go to the locker room and shower and put on one's house pants. <laughs> Raise your hand at home if you're wearing show pants at home watching this show. That guy. None of ya. None of ya. Because you all know when you're at home, you wear your house pants. <laughs> so right now we're like three hours to house pants and I'm feeling fine. It's fine. It's you know, fine. it's a great question. I'm going to do a trick here real quick. Okay, I want you to do this trick. This is a quick question. How many tricks or sets do you have ready when you go to a gig? Depends on the gig. Some of the best gigs ever, I literally had to do 10 minutes. Yeah, they're great. But I had to do it exactly when they wanted me to. You know, one thing, here's a good, here's a good answer to that that's maybe a little more uh, illustrative. I feel like a big gig. I used to do a lot of three-hour events. Uh, so you'd work a cocktail hour, then there'd be some eating, then there'd be maybe another hour and a half of shenanigans afterwards. Well, I feel like an evening is like a chess game. And a show is like a chess game, but so is a whole event. You can't win during the opening. All you can do is open during the opening. You gotta close at closing time. So I used to come in guns blazing like I could win the whole war during the first skirmish. You can't. All you can do is set up to play the first skirmish. So it's a whole night. So my feeling is you wanna have one or two setups per, depending on how big your setups are. I'm fortunate enough to be a, uh, card magician, which means I am very versatile in that way, and that's one of the things that, you know, cards aren't everything, but they've got something going for them, and it's versatility, right? Um, but one or two setups for the first round, one or two setups for the second round. And I was always a big uh, fan of the thunderbolt idea, meaning I'll work with my cards for uh, the evening, uh, all my middles will be with cards, and there will be thunderbolts one in each pocket, you know what I mean? So that when the moment aligns, you can cast down your thunderbolt and literally obliterate everything within eyesight distance of you, and you'll literally be standing in a nuclear crater of your own magic. But no effect in the world that's that strong abdicates you the responsibility of knowing how to fire when you see the whites of their eyes. Sorry to go back to the standing your ground metaphor again, but at the end of the day, We've, have you all ever worn too much stuff to a show before? <laughs> Does everyone know what it's like to carry ordnance in your pockets to a magic show? Your pleats, which you only got those pleats so that you could carry all that crap in your pockets. And your pleats are bulged out now from billiard balls and large coins. And, I mean, not me, I'm, but I've seen it and I've also had too much stuff in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
take a drink, change your house pants, whatever you got to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the point being, you put a couple real powerful things in your pocket. You work with stuff that's small, you do your skirmishes with things that are small, but whenever something's developing that's big and huge, you turn it up, you amp it up, and you get ready to make the big silver bullets you have in each back pocket count. And then at that point, you've obliterated everything, every, everything. So go have a soda, put some new stuff in your pockets, and start over again. That's it. OK. So we've got this theme going about the uh, personalities of the cards. Fair enough. Let's just go ahead and work with that theme a touch uh, longer. Sir. How are you holding up over there? Pretty good. All things being equal, right? Yep. Hey, man, we're a quarter of the way through it now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to shuffle like this. What I'd like you to do, you can say, <laughs> absolutely serious. OK, as I shuffle through here, you say stop. You could stop me there, or there, or there, or there. Yeah? Yeah. That's good for you. You're a nice guy. Hi. Right. You want to stop there, or there? Let's go there. There? Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a nice personified uh, card there. You know, I really, the cards do really remind me of people sort of archetypally, and I think we can see that. I mean, look at that. that the Jack, right? That's a powerful card. It means something to us on a subconscious level. We don't even know what it means. The Joker, that'll be me. I'll be the magician. I'll take this Joker and I'll stick it here in the pack so that uh, you can see him there. And he'll be the magician, and his job is to give the other cards a sort of a transformative experience. So watch carefully. If I just do this here, changes to blue. <laughs> I said blue. <laughs> we'll try it again here. Oh, if only I could have made a living all these years just making Dan laugh. <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. And that changes to blue. Right? But this magician, he has the power actually, just by being in the group here, to do a lot stronger than that. Watch carefully here. And they all change to blue. Each and every card, pardon me, changes to blue, except for the magician who never gets transformed himself. Of course, it occurred to me after many, many years that that's kind of why we do it, is because it just makes us feel great in the first place. So uh, that's machine, and the reason I want to get into it again, I'm not going to make a meal out of it, but what's great about machine is it was this wonderful gaffe that came from panic. Oh, let me just show you this real quick. This is another thing. All of you guys who are interested in machine, check this out, because look at this. This is the reset of the new handling of machine, and this is what I wanted to show you. This is one of the big things. This is now totally walk around ready with this new handling. I'm so pleased that uh, I developed it on the road with Brian McElvain while I was touring last year. And what happens is this. After you leave the table, you've literally just cratered out everybody. Bam. It's done. You say, good night. Right? You turn around. You do this. One, flip that, stick it 10 cards down, milk those off, and flip the deck over. And the thing's reset. So now, you do panic, whatever you want to do. You pull these cards out, and now you're ready to go for machine. Okay? So another thing that we've got going on this handling is that this card's on top. So the idea of machine was always, just for me, a way to try and do the Vernon routine. I wanted to stay as close to the Vernon routine as I possibly could. Because the Vernon routine is, I think, really still, all in all, the finest color changing deck routine that there is. And, and so this new handling really gets you there. So take the red card, place it on top of the deck. Take the machine card, place it right underneath. You got the whole blue deck. You got the blue joker, which matches the red card. Down a bit. And that's how you start. And a nice thing about the Vernon routine is you could technically open with it because you do establish the color of the deck. I still don't think that's the strongest way to go. I still think the 